Thanks for tuning back in. Here are Asia's news headlines. Fake Apple watches spring up in Shenzhen for 55 US dollars. China defends reclamation work in South China Sea. In the bristling electronics district of the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen, dozens of unofficial retailers are making local replicas of the soon to be launched Apple Watch available. The new Apple Watch will go on sale in China on April 24th, the same day as the United States. Unlike the iPhone 6, which hit Chinese stores almost a month after the U.S., but in various shops in an electrical wholesale district for electronic materials in Shenzhen, the city where they are manufactured, these fake Apple Watches are already on display in glass cabinets besides copies of other smartphone watch brands. Selling for around 55 US dollars, they promise a range of functions including messaging, phone calls, and video, and also have popular Chinese apps such as WeChat and QQ. Unlike the genuine Apple products, however, new apps cannot be downloaded. Zhang Xiaon, a salesperson for an Apple realtor, said the high price of the real Apple Watch could affect its sales in China and end up making the fake ones even more popular. Even in the Apple crazed country, the second biggest iPhone market after the US, it seems too soon to say whether the curved wristwatches from Cupertino will command that must-have status fascination for millions of middle upper class Chinese. The Apple Watch carries a huge price tag in China. The cheapest sport model will sell at a little below 3,000 yuan, $479 US dollars including tax, versus $349 in the United States. While the high-end luxury edition will set buyers back more than 145,000 yuan, which is $23,157, against the 17,000 in the U.S. Three. The Chinese government mounted a detailed defense on Thursday of its reclamation work in the disputed South China Sea, stating that its activities were aimed at meeting both military and civil needs. Newly released satellite images show that China is quickly reclaiming land around a submerged reef within an area the Philippines regards as its exclusive economic zone. The work on Mischief Reef is China's most re recent reclamation in the disputed Spratly Archipelago of the South China Sea. Reclamation is well advanced on six other reefs in the Spratlys, Reuters reported in February, activities that have alarmed other claimants and drawn concern from Washington. A March 16th image published by the Center for Strategic and International Studies shows what is said were a chain of small artificial land formations as well as new structures barricaded sea walls and construction equipment along Mischief Reef. Several dredgers are also present while the entrance to the reef had been expanded, the CSIS Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative said on its website. A photograph from February 1st showed a Chinese amphibious transport naval vessel several hundred meters from the reef's entrance. CSIS said such a ship was capable of holding up to 800 troops and as many as 20 amphibious armored vehicles. Surveillance images taken of Miss Cheeks Reef in October and seen by Reuters shown on no reclamation work. Asked about mischief reefs in light of the images, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter said he did not want to speculate on China's future plans, but added that the militarization of territorial disputes in the South China Sea could lead to dangerous incidents. China's Hua said the criticism was an example of double standards. While China's new islands will not overturn U.S. military superiority in the region, workers are building ports and fuel storage depots, as well as possibly two airstrips that have authorities have said would enable Beijing to project power deep into the maritime heart of Southeast Asia. The Philippines first said in February that Chinese dredgers had started work as Mischief Reef, 135 miles west of the Philippine island of Palawan, China. Claims the entire South China Sea, Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines, Taiwan, along with Vietnam, also have claims on the important waterway. China occupied Mischief Reef in 1995.
The October photos showed two structures, including a three-story building sitting on a reef. U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter met South Korean Defense Minister Han min Ku on Friday in Seoul. Carter arrived in South Korea on Thursday for a three-day visit to the country after a two-day visit to Japan. Before the talks, Carter attended a welcoming ceremony hosted by Han. Carter's visit to the Asia-Pacific region is his first since becoming Pentagon chief, is aimed at advancing the U.S. strategic rebalance in the region. The U.S. Department of Defense said during the meeting that Carter is anticipated to discuss the administration's plans to push ahead with the rebalance to the Asia-Pacific region that President Obama announced in his 2012 defense strategic guidance. The rebalance called for an intensified concentration on the region by the Pentagon as well as other government agencies. Carter is also expected to discuss a response to North Korea's growing missile and nuclear threat. North Korea fired two short-range missiles on Tuesdays, South Korea Defense Ministry said. That followed the launch last Friday of four short-range missiles off the west coast of Korea, shortly before Carter arrived in the region. After the meeting, Carter and Han will visit a naval fleet to remember the South Korean sailors who died during the Xi'an naval warship sinking in 2010 which killed 46 sailors, the South Korean Defense Ministry said. South Korea has said North Korea torpedoed the ship, but the North has denied any responsibility. More on North Korea, state-run television KRT on Wednesday released several still photographs of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un wearing a bandage on his right wrist. In the images, however, Kim waved and was shaking hands with factory workers at Pyongyang Weak Current Machine Plant. The reason for his injury was not immediately reported by KRT. The date of the visit was also not reported. Kim limped onto the stage on the anniversary of his grandfather's death footage broadcast by state media showed last year in a rare display of weakness in a country where leaders are portrayed as almost divine. Seoul's Yonghap News Agency said the machine plant produces missile parts and other electronic parts for military supplies. More than 100 dolphins washed up on this beach near Hokoda City in Japan on Friday. Coast Guard and police officers have been trying to carry the animals back to the water. Local volunteers have been pouring water on them to keep them hydrated. Local media reports said by Friday afternoon, scores of the melon-headed Whale dolphins were stuck in the sand. Many of them were weakening because they'd been out of water for so long. It wasn't immediately clear what caused the animals to beach themselves, nor how many will survive the ordeal. Meet the iRoad, a three-wheeled electric vehicle developed by Japanese car maker Toyota. It is a cross between a scooter and a mini car. Drivers can pick up the car with, at one location and drop it off at various other locations around the city where it can be returned to a particular charging station. The service is in collaboration with parking lot operator Park24 and aims to become the future of urban transportation. Here's Toyota Ikehiro Yanai explaining. The concept of iRoad is that it has the qualities of a bike. It's easy to make small, quick turns, and it doesn't take a lot of space when parking. On the other hand, it has the comfort of a regular car, where you can drive it in the rain and without a helmet. Those without driving skills can drive it with stability. The one-seater is 7.5 feet long and has a maximum speed of 37 miles per hour. Drivers can rent the iRoad by the minute and are required to have a license. The service will start at six-month trial period soon, and its creators hope it will offer a wise solution to the growing global pollution problem. A liquid metal, shape-shifting robot like the T-1000 from the Terminator movies could be a lot closer to reality. This droplet of liquid metal alloy can change shape when an electrical current is applied to it. But it's what happens when a flake of aluminum is added that has got scientists really ecstatic. The metal consumes the aluminum, creating hydrogen bubbles that allow it to move on its own, in effect fueling itself. Professor Lu Jing from China's 
Tsinghua University is leading the research and this is what he had to say. The machine has two processes. One is to create gases like hydrogen. Part of these gases form the propulsion. There's also something important, in fact very important, which is the electricity generated behind the alloy. So this galvanic battery, it creates an internal electrical power and this type of electricity will very easily lead to stretching of the surface on the liquid metal in an asymmetrical pattern. And this pattern leads to rotations inside the liquid metal. And the process of these rotations will set the liquid metal in motion in a certain direction. Researchers say it could have a variety of medical applications and could lead to tiny self-propelling devices for delivering medicine in blood vessels. Dr. Li Jing says, at present it has potential to become a robot, but a robot for the veins. So apart from a robot for the veins, it could for example be used in people's windpipes and digestive system. It may perhaps be able to carry out some medical tasks. For example, transporting some medicines. Comparisons to a deadly Terminator style robot may be a bit premature, but the terms say a metal that can convert chemical energy to mechanical energy could eventually lead to the development of liquid robots. We will be back after a commercial break.